to this bit of news because i've missed out on it and i've been slacking and super out of the sorts of it but most of you are aware about five days ago a video got leaked online i'm guessing courtesy of um stephen crowder's ex-wife who wanted to set the record straight um despite crowder coming out and kind of it felt like getting ahead of the story when he put out that little clip essentially speaking about how him and his wife were divorced um had been divorced for i think a year now it felt like and behind the scenes candace owens of all people was putting her proverbial flipping stiletto on his neck by essentially um blackmailing him and whatnot um over the flipping footage or whatever it may be or just the fact that he was divorced in the first place because he's this christian christian conservative dude who speaks about the sanctity of marriage and now him getting divorced could be seen as an l which i don't really understand anyway all the flipping hyperbole about that but i guess the fact that she was putting her foot on his neck about it was definitely something that we should have logged in our should have logged in our mind anyway the first round of details to come out of this was the video that went um, viral um, that was showcasing um, Stephen Crowder being very, very, very mean and rude to his wife. Um, and especially when you consider at the time of this video, this ring video, she was like eight months pregnant, clearly very, very pregnant in this video, uh, belly protruding out there. And clearly, you know, in the, in the space where you'd imagine a man would kind of go out of his way to make sure that she's feeling comfortable in any way, shape or form and make sure that she's looked after and when these are covered and Stephen kind of decided to be a bit combative. So this is a clip. We're going to play it through and then I'm going to give you my opinions and then we're going to continue to the other parts of the story. Your boundary. I drew a boundary. No, no, you just did, you just did it. I drew a boundary of abuse and cruel. You were not taking the car. Because if you refuse to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. Steaks, wood pellets, my grill. I know it's not a reasonable request, but I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the man? Yes, how do you man? I will man. You see the love of that. Respect. No, no. How do you man? No, you're not taking the car. You're not taking the car. You are not taking the car. Then I will ask someone to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, that's right. Get an Uber. Okay, Stephen, I can't. The fact that. The fact that Stephen Crowder is telling his eight-month pregnant wife at the time to get an Uber and that she can't take the car, like, is legitimately one of the most insane things I have seen in my entire life. But I'm just wondering overall, just wondering aloud, like, what is it with these guys? What is it with these guys who kind of preach this message of family, of having wives, of having children, who, you know, try and basically paint themselves out to be the perfect, you know, family man, beast of a dad, who behind the scenes are legitimately horrible people. To, I feel like, some of the most important people in their lives and their careers. Because I feel like in general, and again, this isn't to be a simp or to cuck up or to kind of, what's that word called? Or to pander. But I genuinely think, genuinely think that the partner's whether they're male or female of prominent content creators um political what you, what's that what, what would you say political um speaker type people uh podcasters stand-up comedians whatever it may be i think their partners are legitimately some of the most some if i'm in, honestly in my opinion some of the most important people in the industry because they allowed them the ability to go and stream for a number of hours while they look after the flipping household, while they look after the kids, the pets, whatever it may be, right? They go out of their way to do so and let the kind of other half go and do all that kind of fun content sort of stuff and hold the houses down. They legitimately do. So I, it's just interesting to me how many of them are so awful to their partners behind the scenes and how often and how kind of how kind of um how, what's that word what's that word you need to use how how this isn't this doesn't feel like a one-off thing this doesn't feel like something that you know 
is something that we haven't seen before. I'm sure this happens in many other households of many other of these prominent people that we all kind of know and love. And some of them will probably disappoint us if we found out who they were. I'm sure of it. I'm sure Stephen Crowder isn't the only person in that space who treats their partners like this behind the scenes. They all do it. And I'm just really bemused why these guys seem to do this, especially when you consider the important role these partners play in their careers because without them i legitimately think these people won't be able to have the careers that they have because it's quite nice to do your content to do whatever you're doing perform on stage go on tour knowing that back home whoever you're with is basically you know holding down the fort as joe said to brendan right really looking after the family so you can go out there and be kind of carefree and be loose and be fun on stage that's an important part to play an important role to play also let's continue Feeling some constraints? Steven. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. Uh, I can't call my friends. Bitch. I can't go. I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. Imagine being a grown ass man. Imagine someone that you rate. You Imagine you think of yourself as an alpha male and you're happy to sit in your flipping you know sit in your garden with your feet up on the table smoking a cigar in the sun and letting your eight month pregnant wife go out and do the shopping and pick you up something while she's out there imagine being happy doing that what kind of man does that like imagine what kind of man is happy to have their wife go out there eight months pregnant while they have their feet up she's bending over struggling to get the fucking trolley or the fucking car out of the flipping you know whatever it may be put the coin in like all that hassle and you're at home just puffing on a cigar chilling with your feet up on the table disgusting disgusting no that doesn't work either you'll be back when you're back that doesn't work either <laughs> I, I, do you understand the difference between my life being set <laughs> what, was that? Going what was that I, I, do you understand the difference between my life pick up i'll get it i'll be back when i'm back no, that doesn't work either. What was that sound? It's funny that he sounds as annoying as he does when he's doing his show as he does behind the scenes. He has the same inflections and he speaks in the same condescending, kind of like arrogant way. Like, I don't know. Maybe in my head I thought he sounded softer. You know some people how like, you know some people like, um, I don't know, let's think of somebody controversial. Yeah, like Alex Jones. Some people say, oh, Alex Jones, man, behind the scenes, it's actually really nice, you know. He actually comes across really calm, really chill. He's not always shouting at you, right? It's kind of always a nice surprise when you hear those type of things. Oh, wow, this Alex Jones guy behind the scenes is just like a well-mannered, chill dude. But when the cameras turn on, he turns on his persona of Alex Jones. But it's funnier when these guys are exactly the same as they are on camera behind the scenes because they think to yourself, whoa, if Alex Jones is like, the way he is on camera when he's on Infowars, he must be a nightmare to be in the house with. He must be a nightmare to be married to. He must be a nightmare if that's your dad or something, right? Day to day. If that Alex Jones persona comes home with him. Same with the Stephen Crowder thing. Like, that fucking Eva, that What the fuck was that? <laughs> he's trying to toy and tease with his heavily pregnant eight-month heavily eight month pregnant flipping wife at the time emotional at the time also sensitive at the time whatever she's going through right physiologically bodily right and he is kind of what teasing her probing her like oh my god this is awful man you'll be back when you're back that doesn't work either <laughs> I, I, do you understand the difference between my life being set to the second and you're going to be back on back <laughs> The only way out of it is discipline. It's the only way out of it is Legitimately, right? He's only getting away with this because he's Stephen Crowder. I can't imagine in my entire life if I tried to tell a girl I was seeing, hey, what, what did he say? What's the line he says here? Oh, let me see. Where's the line? It's there somewhere, isn't it? Oh, no, don't load that. Please, I beg this thing doesn't load. Look at what is it. Hold on. Let's see here. Oh no, it's loading. I get caught really quickly. Bear with me. I get caught. I'm just saying, I just think 
part of the reason why he's getting away this is because of flipping he's Stephen Crowder because I don't think any other girl in my life would allow me to say discipline and respect and she would still be there when I got back from the shops or when she got back from the shops or she would never come back actually this is legit. Discipline is being set to the second. Discipline and respect, like what? The only way out of this. The only way out of this is discipline and respect. Can anybody in the chat here think of anybody else? Anybody else? Any? Can you think of anybody, whether it's a man or a woman, right? Whether it's a he or a she or a they or a them that would allow you to say that to them <laughs> and you're still in a relationship the next day can you think about how long you've been in a doghouse if you spoke to your partner this way the only way out of this is discipline and respect just trying to get a woman that you're in a relationship with to acknowledge that she may have been wrong in an argument is hard enough <laughs> right a legit argument a legit argument that you feel like maybe a debate or a difference of opinion you feel like you're legitimately in the right F trying to get a woman to fucking acknowledge that is a fucking landmine it's a it's 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 hazardous right it can legitimately go either way for you imagine uttering the words the only way out of this is discipline and respect <laughs> whilst you have your your feet crossed <laughs> with a cigar in your hand mate i would have got i would have got shit thrown at me by this time do you know what I mean? <laughs> come on man it's discipline it's the only way out of it we're at an impact we are going to do that because you can't have any discipline yeah. you can't have discipline yeah. respect there you go you throw your hand you give up so easily i don't give up so you, know, you give up so easily also 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 a little note here a little note a little note here just to kind of i've just just re watch this again have any of you guys noticed how much they're whispering and how low they're talking i know the volume isn't a great it's because it's a ring camera but it sounds like they argue often in the house and maybe neighbors have called the police on them or had someone come over do a welfare check or something i feel like they're both very conscious of not screaming or shouting or being too loud it could be because they've got other kids in the house who are sleeping maybe that's a, maybe that's the case or maybe the kids room is behind them but it feels like they are intentionally not speaking too loud and that's really also kind of sad that this is kind of a daily occurrence beforehand they were always arguing always screaming at each other i, I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect you said then we're at an impasse Steven, no we are at an impasse okay <laughs> i love you but steven steven you're a beast he's sick you're abuse. watch it he's sick you're abusing watch you're it. sick of course <laughs> fucking watch it <laughs> watch it <laughs> honestly i swear to god man some women you guys put up with way too much i legitimately can't think of any girl in my entire life i've ever dealt with who would let me get away with saying you need some discipline and respect and telling her to watch it i can't think of one where it would run where i would literally be able to speak to her the next day <laughs> i can't think of it or even the same day i can't think of it these these ladies let these guys get away with murder i swear to god watch it how dare you watch it watch this i'm not coming back <laughs> you know what i mean i'm gonna let go i'll get what you need to get and i i need some space we need to just talk and baby a little bit okay i love you i love you very much i don't love you that's the big problem Jesus I've never Christ. received love from you, and the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, you just be disciplined about it, you go, no, but I love you more than life itself, okay, put on some gloves, no, but I love you more than life itself, that's not fair, that's not fair, and it's disingenuous, Hillary, you're right, right in past, become someone, let's do it, day in and day out, worthy of a life, worth, no, not as a life, I didn't say a wife worthy become a wife that's worthy full of love can you what honestly i would love to know the context of this argument and i know couples argue all the time but honestly what would possess you to want to speak to your wife at this moment in time who's eight weeks who's eight months pregnant in this way what surely could have let them get this way surely there should be a point where you're like you know what let bygones be bygones babe let me get you let me let me drive you whatever it may be do something just to kind of squash this because this is just insane 
Say no more. Jewelry? Jewelry, come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get text me what you need. I'll get you what you need. I... Honestly, the fact that Steven Crowder can't afford or doesn't want to give, not afford, that's for sure not true. The guy's got money. The fact that he doesn't let his wife drive her own car is pretty sickening, to be honest. What, what do you think his explanation for that could be? Does she not have a license? Or of course she does because she drives a car. But like, there's no, there's no, there's no explanation that would make that make sense. Especially when you consider that he's, I don't think the studio's at his house. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, conf maybe I'm not right here, but I don't think he films Louder with Crowder at his own home. I think Louder with Crowder is filmed somewhere else. Yo, big up Austin Casey for the five dollar donation. Did you hear the allegations that he exposed himself to male staffers? Yes, Austin Casey, you read my mind. You read my mind, brother. It's coming. It's coming. Big up you. Thank you for the five dollars. I appreciate it, brother. It's coming right now. It's coming. Um, but just to finish that point. He doesn't record Louder with Crowder at his home. I don't think so. He's probably recording in the studio. And he's been, he's been doing that show for a long time. So there's no reason why the wife shouldn't have a car if he's gone, like, what, eight plus hours a day or whatever it is that they do the show. It's pretty crazy that she doesn't have her own car. And there's definitely a reason for it. And we all know what it is. Control. He wants to make sure that he knows where she is at all times. She can't leave the home. She has to stay doing motherly, wifely things and looking after the kids and cooking and cleaning, whatever it may be, or whatever the reason is. He just doesn't want us to have any level of independence in the slightest, which is pretty nuts. I love you. I'm committed. Thank you. 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 Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to do Are you committed enough to do those things? Yeah. You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. Oh, yeah, but big up, yeah, Natashki, big up you. <clears throat> you definitely called it from a while ago, <clears throat> us Crowder. Again, my Crowder radar has been off because I don't really watch much of his content. Apart from that debate me table stuff that he does and the man in the street stuff that he's doing at college campuses, I've not really engaged with him that much apart from that stuff. And that stuff is, I feel like, his best representation of him because i feel like he does really well in those panel discussions he comes across pretty well but i feel like everybody else that watches his actual show louder with crowder says that he comes across like a bit of a piece of shit people said that from the beginning and i feel like from the time that he went on rogan and rogan kind of made him cry and shit and the whole like running away from sam cedar and the debates and stuff i think overall it's just interesting to see that people on the internet viewers like yourselves and chats and stuff and commentators and people on social media were saying that Stephen Crowder was a piece of shit from day dot before they had any evidence of what he gets up to behind closed doors and it's just interesting that it's been proved right and it goes to show that in the land of content creation or in the world of content creation if you do this long enough uh, and you do this consistently enough it's pretty difficult to hide who you are <laughs> like it's pretty difficult if you're a piece of shit People can kind of sense it and they can kind of tell. You don't need to say too much. You don't need to act a certain way, but we can just tell. It, it just comes off of you. Just it's like a it's like a stench. It's like an aura. It's like a whatever. Something about you. People could just sense it and think, you know what? There's something not quite right with that guy. And I'm just funny to see how so many people on the internet called it with Stephen Crowder. Before they knew anything about his family life anything about what his wife has to suffer with behind closed doors before they knew anything about how he is as a boss everybody kind of felt there's something odd about Stephen. and this is again outside of anything people may think of him being whatever he is outside of his relationship and what he does up you know we're not talking about that just him as a person i just find it interesting how the internet called it that's a definitely that's definitely a w for the for for social media and the internet at large for sure you just said I love you. I'm committed to that. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm going to Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dogs? Don't you take it. Take that in. 
So as Crowder heads inside, Crowder, no, as Crowder's head inside, Stephen gets angry and angrier, and by his own admission, screams, "I'll fuck you up!" at his pregnant wife Hillary, who then flees their home. So I'm assuming this was one of the final fights that kind of, you know, one of the final nails in the coffin and then the kind of separation was agreed upon. The funny thing that I've read so far about the separation was that, if I'm not mistaken, what's funny about it is that she actually separated from him, but he was trying to separate from her in the beginning, but he just didn't file it in time or something. So like he wanted to obviously have the... um have the bragging rights of saying that he broke up with his wife but she just got in there quicker which is absolutely hilarious to kind of see that play out in real time